Hey guys, welcome to another Tech Core Duo video. And for today, I've got a tutorial on how to access a remote Linux file system using the Finder on your Mac. So, in other words, if you're using a Linux uh, server, you're limited to command line and nano commands to edit text files and uh, you know make changes, copy and paste, and move files. Uh, you know command line is great, but sometimes when you want a you know a visual approach to working on a Linux server, uh, there's actually an option for you. Uh, it's using a tool called Fuse and uh, SSHFS. So it's pretty much a secure shell uh, file system. And uh, I'm going to run you guys through kind of the process of how to get that up and running. Uh, you'll see on the kind of bottom left of the screen there, I have a remote uh, Linux server up uh, just so you can see, uh, you know, how that looks like and how we're going to get the uh, sort of uh, file system uh, to appear on our Mac. Uh, there is a bit of a prerequisite for this. You have to have a root user enabled. Uh, if you don't know how to do that or haven't done that yet, you can uh, check out my last video, and you'll see it on there, uh, basically how to enable the root user, which is uh, pretty straightforward. But let's get right to it. So uh, first thing we're gonna do is switch from my regular account to my root account. All right, we're gonna go to other, type in root, and we're gonna go ahead and put in the password here. All right, guys. All right, guys. So now that we've uh, logged into the, now that we've logged into the root account, uh, we're gonna have to download two uh, two items. One is OS 10 Fuse, uh, which is a system preferences uh, pane that will will allow you to mount a, a remote Linux file system, and uh, the second one is SSHFS, which will kind of read the the file system and kind of tell Fuse what it needs to do. Uh, so I will actually attach these files to the video so that you guys can just directly uh, download them from here and not have to search for them on the web. But let's go through that. Let's install Fuse. First place. All right. That's good. Agree. Yes. And install. Awesome. Now that we got that, that's great. Uh, let's quit close that and then the second one is going to be SSHFS which is the secure shell file system agree install beautiful looks like both of those items went without a hitch all right now we're just, we're just going to confirm that uh, fuse was installed right, we're going to go to terminal all right uh, I'm going to make these items a little bit bigger Oops. Just so that we can see a little bit better here. Yes, I think that should be good for us. I think that should be good. I think you guys should be able to read pretty clearly at that size. All right, uh, so what I'm gonna do is type fuser into terminal. Awesome. So this is letting me know that, hey, Fuser is here. Here are the options for Fuser. All right. And what we're going to do now is create a folder on the desktop. This is going to be the mount point for the remote Linux server. And we're, I'm just going to name it something like Lin uh, Fuse. You can name it anything. It doesn't have to be anything specific. It's just the uh, first thing that popped into my mind. All right. And now what we're going to do is tell Fuser minus C, I want this directory to be treated as the mount, mount point. And I'm going to take the linfuse folder that I made, drag it into here. That's You can type out the directory, but dragging it in is just a little bit quicker. Uh, there's usually a space after. Uh, what you can do is just delete that one blank space so it doesn't get in the way. Uh, now we'll hit return. All right, and that confirmed that that's complete. Okay, the next thing that we're going to want to do is... Uh, Let's clear some, some lines so you guys can see where I'm going. And we'll spread this out a little bit. 
and we're going to type SSHFS. We're going to go to root at and then the IP address of your uh, Linux server. So mine is 10.0.1.28. And then we're going to do a colon and a forward slash. So colon forward slash, this just means I want to be at the top of the directory. I want to be as high as I can at the root level of the hard drive. Uh, and then we're going to do a space and we're going to drag in our linfuse folder again and once again delete that uh, one last empty space at the bottom and we're going to hit return all right now it's asking for the root password of your linux server awesome and we know that that worked because as you can tell, the linfuse folder that we just created disappeared and we now have a network mount point. Uh, I'm just gonna shrink this a little bit here and uh, let's double click on that. And there we go, we have our visual kind of interface here. Uh, one of the benefits of, do, of, of also doing this through the root user account on your Mac is that now you can uh, edit files freely that are locked without having to resort to like, uh, you know, uh, the nano editor or editing them directly in the command line. So that's a really big plus. So for instance, uh, I'm going to go to my var folder, uh, www. And then I have snipe it here and here's an env file. Okay. Uh, this file normally is locked and you cannot edit it. But since uh, I'm in the root user account on my Mac and I'm logged in to root uh, on my Linux server, I have the ability to uh, directly type into this file here, make changes, and have no problem or any kind of permissions issues while doing so. Uh, this is also great for you know dragging and dropping files into directories, copying and pasting in a, in a visual environment, which is, in my opinion, a lot more user friendly than it is, you know, kind of working in, in the command line with CP commands. So that's just uh, that's just my my personal preference. I grew up uh, in the 90s, so I didn't have too much command line. Uh, you know, I kind of grew up with Windows 95, where I already had a user user interface, so I just feel more comfortable around it. But um, at the same time, it's important to understand file systems and how they work, even though that you know we're used to swiping and you know, tapping through everything that we do uh, nowadays with, you know, all of our iPads and lap some laptops even, you know, uh, desktops have, have touch screens. But in any case, uh, hope you guys uh, found that useful uh, and we'll see you next time.